Hey, buddy. We are here today to talk about trapezoids, and I have a special guest teacher. Um, please say hello, Elizabeth. Hi. <laughs> okay. This is my daughter, Libby. She's going to help us learn about... Trapezoids. Trapezoids. So a trapezoid is a quadrilateral. Do you know what that means, Libby? Um, it has four sides. It has four sides. Very good. Okay. And it has one pair of parallel sides. What does that mean, that they're parallel? Parallel means that, um, I can't explain it, but the two L's in parallel are parallel are parallel from each other. Ooh, the two L's in parallel are parallel to each other. Like okay. train tracks. Like train tracks. So it has exactly one pair of parallel sides, I should say. So I'm going to draw a trapezoid. So I'm going to draw a top, and I'm going to draw a bottom. Those two sides are parallel. I show they're parallel with a little arrow. And then the other two sides are not parallel to each other. So we have one pair of parallel sides. Now, these two parallel sides, we call those the bases. So we can call this base 1, and we can call this base 2. Now, like all the other sh shapes we've been looking at, we also have the height, so usually they will have a height drawn in here. Okay, these slanted sides, we are not going to be using those to find the area. So what we're looking at is base 1, base 2, and the height. Now a trapezoid can also be drawn on its side. It doesn't have to be drawn like I just drew it. It could be drawn like this. Those are my parallel sides, so that's base 1 and base 2. And then these other sides, which are not parallel, we're not going to be using those. Okay, so we're going to look at how to find the area of a trapezoid. So here's our first example. So, Libby, what is the length of base 1, or one of the bases? Um, there's 4. 4. And what is the length of the other base? 10. 10. And what is the height? The height is 5. 5. Okay. Now, in parallelograms, we just did base times height, and that gave us the area. Let's look at what happens if we do that here. What if we decide that 4 is our base, and 5 is our height? and we find the area of that rectangle right here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say the area of the small rectangle. 4 times 5 would give us what, Libby? 4 times 5 is 20. 20. Why isn't 20 the area of the trapezoid? Um, is that green square or rectangle the area of the trapezoid? No. Why not? Because um, it's just a little square, and there's still the two corners. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we've left out some space. Okay, so what if we use this 10 instead? What if we do 10 times 5? So the area of the big rectangle, and we do 10 times 5. What does that give us? That gives us 50. Is 50 the area of our trapezoid? Um, no. Is this red rectangle? Is that going to be that the trapezoid? No, because um, you did some extra space. Ah, extra space. So that green rectangle I drew was... Uh, too, too small. small. And this red rectangle was... Too big. So we need to find the Goldilocks rectangle. What did Goldilocks want to find? She wanted to find the triangle that was just right. Yes. <laughs> so not the one that's too small, not the one that's too big, the one that's just right. So the question is, which base are we going to use? Base 1 or base 2? Any thoughts, Libby? Um, not yet. Not yet? Okay, so we need to find a base that's kind of in between those two bases. Yes. Do you know how we can find a number that's in between 4 and 10? Hmm. No. Well, we're going to find the mean, the average of those. So uh, what we're going okay. to do is we're going to add base 1 plus base 2. Which would be um, 14. 4 plus 10 is 14. And then we're going to divide by 2. That gives us the average, the Goldilocks. Yes. So 14 
14 divided by 2 is 7. And then we're going to multiply that by the height. Multiply by the height. So we're going to do 7 times 5. Which is 35. 35. So our answer is that the area is equal to 35 units squared. So we have two bases once again, base 1, base 2. We're not going to use the 4 because that would be too small. We're not going to use the 10 because that would too, be too big. We're going to find the average of the 4 and the 10 to find us the Goldilocks base and then multiply that by the height. So here are your three steps. Add the bases, divide by 2, multiply by the height. Let's look at another example. Okay, so here they give us some extra information. Uh, Libby, do you know which what we're going to use for our bases? Um, we're going to use the 3 and 11. How do you know 3 and 11 and not 6.5 and 8.1? Because it's on our side. Because it's on its side. Yeah, and these are the sides that are parallel. Yes. So base 1 is 3. Base 2 is 11. And you see that 6.5 and the 8.1, Libby? That's just uh -huh. there to trick you. Okay. So we're going to cross that off. So step one, we're going to do what with the bases? We are going to... Let's look back at the previous slide. Step one, add base one and base two. Oh, yes. So, so what do we do with three and eleven? Um, we add them. So three plus eleven is... is... Fourteen. Okay, and then after we add them, what do we do? We're going to... find the Goldilocks to base. Divide... By? By 2. And 14 divided by 2 is? 14 divided by 2 is 7. And then we're going to multiply that by the height. 7 times, what is the height? Um, 6. 6. And I didn't talk about it yet, but just like with triangles and parallelograms, to find the height, we find that right angle. That gives us that dotted line, that's the height. And that connects your bases. So 7 times 6 is what, Libby? 42. 42. So our area is equal to 42 units squared. So let's review. Step one, add base one plus base two. Step two, divide by two. And then step three, multiply by the height. You got it, Libby? Yes. Excellent. Anything else to say before we sign off? No. Nope. Okay. Say bye-bye, Libby. Bye. -bye,